Good morning and a very warm welcome to the convocation ceremony for the graduates of Christ deemed to be university. I am Suparna Kar, faculty, Department of Sociology and Social Work and I will be your MC today. Congratulations on reaching this milestone in your life. This is a significant achievement and calls for much celebration. This convocation marks an important rite of passage and is a joyous yet solemn occasion. The University Convocation 2020 will begin with the University Anthem, followed by the lighting of the lamp by the Honourable Chancellor, Honourable Vice-Chancellor, Registrar, Controller of Examinations and the Deans as the University Choir sings the prayer song. This will be followed by the prayer read by the Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Father Joe's CC.
Lord of God, we thank you for you have loved us into life. In you we live, move and have our being. You are the beginning and the end of everything that we are and do. Lord, we present before you these dear children of yours whom you entrusted to our care a few years ago. Together with us, they have explored the realms of truth about themselves and the world. As they prepare to graduate into wider horizons of life, Lord, we place them back into your hands. They are yours, Lord. Keep them close to your heart. Infuse their hearts and minds with true wisdom, genuine love, and a burning desire to serve you and their fellow human beings with intellectual, personal, interpersonal, and societal skills. They have imbibed over these years here at Christ University. Enable them to contribute their might through the virtues of excellence and service to make the world a better place for humanity and all of creation. Into your hands, Lord, we commend them, along with their hopes and aspirations for the future and their own very lives. Amen. Dr. Jyoti Kumar, Dean, Bangalore, Banergata Road Campus, will welcome us all for this Convocation 2020. It is my honour and privilege to deliver the welcome address on this momentous occasion of Convocation 2020. Christ deemed to be university is blessed to be guided by the Chancellor, Dr. Father Paul Achandi, who is also the Rector of Dharmaram College, the mother institution of our university. Father has a Master degree in Business Administration from North Maharashtra University and PhD from IIT Madras on Strategic Human Resource Management. He served as a Vice Chancellor of Dharmaram Vidya Chetram, Bangalore, and Prior General of the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, the CMI congregation, before being appointed as the Chancellor of Christ Deemed to be University. Father is an avid reader and researcher and has published numerous scholarly articles. We extend a warm welcome to you, Father. We are delighted to have as our chief guest for this occasion, Professor Tyrone Pretorius, the Rector and Vice-Chancellor of the University of the Western Cape, South Africa. He was previously the Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic at the University of Pretoria, responsible for teaching and learning, the Gordon Institute of Business Science, Resource Allocation and institutional planning. Prior to his appointment at the University of Pretoria, he was the Pro Vice Chancellor of Monash, South Africa, a campus of Monash University, Australia. Before joining Monash, he was Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic at the University of the Western Cape and spent 10 years as Dean of Community and Health Sciences at University of the Western Cape. With a background in psychology, he holds two doctorates, one from the University of the Western Cape and one from the University of the Free State. In addition, he is a past fellow of the Yale University Southern Africa and also participated 
at the Oxford University Leadership Program. We are privileged to have him as the chief guest and we cordially welcome him. We are indeed privileged to welcome our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Father Abraham VM. Father has a master degree in mathematics, MS in computer science from Iona College, New York, and PhD in mathematics from Bangalore University. He has published scholarly papers in the areas of graph theory. We are honored to have you amidst us, Father. We also extend a very cordial welcome to our Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Father Jose C.C., Registrar, Dr. Arnold Joseph Pinto, Controller of Examinations, Professor Johnny Joseph, the Directors, Deans, Heads of Departments, Program Coordinators, Faculty Members and all the non-teaching staff. A very warm welcome is extended to Mr. Jugno Broy, the President of the University Alumni Association. Dear parents, we recognize with gratitude the trust you placed in us to nurture and guide your words. The achievement of your words as well as the growth of the university to a national and global platform would not have been possible without your immense and constant support. We welcome each of you on this proud day of achievement. A very special welcome to all you Christites. Today is the day to reflect on how you spent your time here with us. Today is the day to acknowledge and celebrate your unwavering commitment in reaching today's milestone. We cherish each of you and welcome you all to this moment of celebration. Thank you. After those warm words of welcome, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Father Abraham VM will now address the graduating students and their parents, after which he will invite Father Chancellor to declare the convocation ceremony open. Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Father Paula Chandi, Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Tyrone Pretorius, the Vice Chancellor of Western Cape University, South Africa, Pro Vice Chancellor Father Joe C.C., Registrar Dr. Alin Joseph Pinto, Controller of Examination Professor Johnny Joseph, Respected Deans, HODs, Teaching and Non Teaching Staff, President of the Alumni Association, Mr. Jugno Broy, dear parents, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear Christ Tides. Class of 2020, the world has changed. Our worldview won't be defined by what we lost to the pandemic, but by how we responded to it. The changed world is now yours, and I can't wait to see what you make of it. You have got more role models, more roadmaps, more resources, more tools, technology and talents, and therefore you are better positioned to be champions of ethics and justice and remake the world. Christ University, I am sure, has equipped you with the power to stand for, fight for, and work for safe and healthier conditions that will create a wholesome society. This COVID-19 situation is your opportunity to use your education to heal ourselves and our communities, to apply the best of what you have learned in your heart and felt in your heart to make this world a better place. Who would have thought six months ago that we would be holding our convocation of 2020 in the confines and comforts of your home? Not a fraction of the scale of disruption from offline to online convocation was captured in our contingency plans or even in our wildest imagination. In fact, by March, 
we had drawn up all the minute details of a grand convocation in the Bangalore campuses. That is why it is said, men can only propose and plan, and God Almighty reserves the discretion to dispose. Our thoughts and actions are determined by the successful decisions we have taken in the past. About three to four years back, you opted to apply to this university, and out of so many thousands, we decided to take you because you were the most eligible, and since then, we worked together to realize your goal and a path to secure your future. Along with the academic sessions and research, you were given exposure in co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities, social outreach and environmental extension programs. The skill enhancement and add-on programs were interwoven to endow you with the life skills and mobility to have academic and career progression to serve our nation and the world at large. We at the Christ University were also equally concerned about the value systems and ethos you cherish and practice in your personal and professional life. My dear graduates, always remember that life is a long journey between human being and being humane. Your training in holistic education was to mold you to be aware, just and humane, as a true Christite, always believing in and habituated to excellence and service. The pandemic has given us a new set of mantras to meet the challenges it has unleashed on us. Survive, revive, and thrive. Survive is not mere physical survival, but finding ways to answer this fundamental question how do we survive ethical dilemmas and situational conflicts in our workplace? Have we got the right skill sets to survive the professional and societal challenges? Do we have the economic and financial metrics in place to oversee that our family, dependents, and our organization stay afloat? Once, a highly successful man was asked, what helped you survive the great obstacles of life? He replied, other obstacles. Today, all around us, we hear voices saying over and over on COVID and many difficulties. The bucket is full of obstacles list. My dear students, obstacles do not stop us on our path. They are the path. The lessons I learned from life and listening to those whom I look up to has given me two survival tenets which I would like to share with you. The power of faith and the strength of trust. These are two overarching mutually complementing values that will help you survive any crisis. One of the core values of our institution is faith in God. And this faith goes beyond any sect or religion. The renowned American writer Napoleon Hill says in his book, Law of Success, the greatest of all miracles is faith. Let us remember that when Thomas Alva Edison met with the thousands of temporary failures, it was his faith that helped him reach the goal. He had no precedent to guide him. No other person had ever performed such a miracle as far as civilization knows. The entire humanity progressed not because of collective wisdom, but due to an individual's innate faith and then collective wisdom followed to become what we are today. Although trust is a huge topic by itself, for me, trust means the freedom to fail. When you enjoy trust, you take risks, experiment, and go that extra mile to explore. And if you stumble, falter, or fall, the environment of trust helps you to get up and walk. 
the beauty of these value sets faith and trust are that if you practice one the other comes free let me give you a personal instance to illustrate this and you will be able to relate easily with it a ship and its crew is never judged in come what is likewise a university and its entire academic fraternity or faculty and students are judged better in tough and turbulent times as to how it steers itself in the turbulent waters to reach the shore personally for me my team and this graduating batch the most defining moment in this pandemic period was the decision to hold our final examinations despite the many challenges from all quarters to mobilize resources at a short notice and win the trust of my team was my top priority i must place on record the immense support i received from all stakeholders especially from our fathers who are heading it department father benny thomas and father justin registrar dr anil joseph pindo controller of examinations professor johnny joseph all the management members provost chancellor deans hods and each faculty member and non teaching staff who worked as a team to accomplish the great feat of conducting and evaluating the final examination without many issues the class of 2020 will always be remembered by christ university not as a batch which passed out during covid-19 pandemic or for the first virtual convocation but as a batch which reposed a complete trust and faith in your teachers and the administration of the university and for taking up the examination wholeheartedly without compromising on the sanctity of the academic testimonials each one of you worked hard to get as many as 97% of you stood rock solid behind us to achieve what we are witnessing and experiencing now the most unique convocation held so far in the annals of the university my sincere acknowledgement and hearty appreciation to each one of you and your parents are due here thank you from all of us for positive time let me briefly touch upon the two remaining aspects of the covid-19 success mantra revive and thrive it is said if you change with a change you succeed that is you revive and if you initiate the change then you are the leader of change and that's what thrive means let me conclude with the dapol in hill again all anyone requires as a capital to start a successful career is a sound mind a healthy body and a genuine desire to be of as much service as possible to as many people as possible my dear christites what mr napoleon hill took many words to express is captured in our motto and we say excellence and service may the almighty god bless you in abundance and pave your way for you to march on thank you i remain i have the honor to request you father chancellor to declare the convocation ceremony open this convocation ceremony of christ deemed to be university has been called to award the degrees to the candidates who in the examination held for the purpose have been certified to be worthy of the same i declare the convocation ceremony open let the candidates for the various degrees under school of arts and humanities school of social sciences school of sciences school of commerce finance and accountancy school of business and management school of engineering and technology be presented the controller of examinations professor johnny joseph will now present the candidates to the chancellor
for the chancellor i wish to present to you the candidates named in the list for the degrees of bachelor of arts bachelor of commerce bachelor of business administration bachelor of hotel management bachelor of education bachelor of technology bachelor of arts with bachelor of law bachelor of business administration with bachelor of law bachelor of computer applications master of arts master of science master of commerce master of business administration master of social work master of technology master of computer applications master of law master of philosophy and doctor of philosophy they have been examined and found qualified for the said degrees to which i pray they may be admitted the names of the graduates who will receive their degrees in the convocation today will now be announced School of Engineering and Technology Gold Medals The Alumni Association Gold Medal for the Best Outgoing Student of B.Tech Programs goes to Alan Thomas from Electrical Engineering. Congratulations! Mosharib Ahmed Hashmi Mosharib Ahmed Hashmi has secured first rank in btech in automobile engineering with a cgpa of 3.65 out of 4 alan bob claudius anis n salam dumma umani kanta david sudeep raj gokul s harshit agarwal Jiyush Benjamin John Roy Martin Jiji Nathar Shah Salam P Devashish Padma Saran K M Rakshit Tyagi Sanjo Joy Sean Sebastian Shriram V Shravan Ranjit Harsh Arya Tenzin Kaldain Daniel Solomon Shamant Kumar S Ruben Joseph Rose Alan A Thomas Gudapa Harsh Vardhan Reddy Dhakan Harsh Yashwant Bai Kasaru Venkatesh Dhanush P Nambiar Christopher Campus J Kartigen Nabil P Harsh Gupta Mosharib Ahmed Hashmi Gaurav Mishra Atul P Joel Joseph Tom Arun Narsimhan BTech in civil engineering Balimba Bakonwa Christian Balimba Bakonwa Christian has secured the first rank in BTech in civil engineering with a CGPA of 3.86 out of 4 Aditya C Jo Aswin Ravi Mundoli Balimba Bakonwa Christian Aksa John Daslan Alex Kotail Bindu Abraham Meryl Matthew Meryl Marlonga Brenda Suzanne Sir James Gerald and Matthew Nitin M Shiva Putrappa J Melgiri Ashlyn Vergis Manu Mangalan Lingala Mary Jayashila Ashif Kesi Robin P Luke Sadhana S Devdarshan G Pranjal Jain 
अनिरुद्ध सिंह राठौर अभिषेक नायर अंकुश बैनर्जी चंदन कुमार सेनापति श्रीराम वी एम वैष्णवी जेफरी जॉनसन लेवन बीटेक इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग संस्कृति नायर संस्कृति नायर हैज सेक्योर्ड फर्स्ट रैंक इन बीटेक इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग विद सी जी पी ए ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट नाइन फोर आउट ऑफ फोर एबिन बाबू एबिन जॉर्ज जॉन एडविन एस बाबू अजय कृष्णा डी आकाशदीप सिंह अखिल फ्रांसिस अकु टॉम एलन जोजफ एल्टन लैवन डिजोजा अमन अहमद अमित शंकर सुनील लाल एंड्रू अनिल अंशुल मदनू बेन जोज क्रिस्टी फिलिप पंडलिल डी कैविन मणिकंता गुणवर्धन डेरिन पिनहेरो दीपांशु गोयल डेनिस जे कुरविला दिविन शाजी ध्रुव सरीन दोषी हर्षित डिलन फिलिप जोज ज्ञानपुरम प्रमोद हिरानी धनिश करीम जर्माया जॉय जोजफ जितन एंथनी जोजफ जॉन डेवी जुआन जोस वडकन केको योशु कनन एम केविन मैथ्यू कोरक बैनर्जी कोतरा श्री रंगा केतन कुणाल राज भरद्वाज मनीष कुमार तिवारी मनमोहन परश्वन नाल बोलू वंशी तेजस नमन कुमार निहाल कुमार निजोन जोमी के निरुपम शर्मा पेनुमल्ली मितेश रेड्डी पोतराजू विशेष प्रागदीश एम आर अंकित आर मिथिलेश कुमार राघव मल्होत्रा राहुल राजू रातिकिंदी वेंकटर दिनेश कुमार रिचर्ड एन फर्नांडिस रोहन रॉनी रॉनल पी मैथ्यूज रॉनित सी पीटर रायन वी फ्रिट्स सैमडन लेपचा सैमसन विलियम्स संजय पॉपटनी संजीत दत्ता संकेत एका सौरभ शर्वन जोजफ सनी शिवम कात्री श्रेयान घोष श्री कृष्णन वी तेजस्वर साय घयाला टेंजिन रिंचन टेंजिन नागा टोनन के थॉमस वरुण मनोहरन वेद प्रकाश विजय रामकृष्ण मेनन वीरेन लूक राधाकृष्णन आकांक्षा राज अंबिका चुंद्रू एंड मेरी के सबैस्टिन अपूर्वा एम जे केजल टर्की क्रिस्टीना वर्गिस डैफीन बाबू दीपशिका चंद्रशेखर गालीवानी प्रियंका हन्ना सूजन इब्राहम हीना मुकेश कुमार उदेशी कृति सी मरीना इब्राहम मोनिशा आर प्रज्वी सक्सेना रेचल प्रतिभा जॉन संस्कृति नायर शिवप्रिया रंगनाथा 
शिव शंकरी आर स्तुति बाजपे विजयलक्ष्मी सी रक्षिता बी एस एशली जॉर्ज एल्विस मोंडाल आनंदन श्री कुमार निकिल्स बास्टिन निशा एम ए कामिशेटी वेंकटा हेमंत कुमार लिबिन जोसेफ जेफनेल आशीष ए अतुल श्रीकांत राव आशुतोष सिंह दक्ष अंगराज गौतम जोशुआ मामन स्टीफन जमीमा ज्योतिर्मय अबुद्या सिंह तक निकिल कुंजमोन पवन कुमार पी हेरन अमल सिंथिया बैसलिया सैरा वर्गिस फाल्गुनी रथौर प्राची सेती युवराज ए राघव ठोटला आराधना प्रताप जवाल जैनसन द्वारका प्रसाद सिंह रीमा एन रेनी जैसमिन ई जे मालविका रेडी जूड जोज मुनीर अहमद आशीष एस सिद्धार्थ भवानसी मंजेरी शिजित एस मैथ्यू मणिवर्णन पी बी हर्षल भंसाल अभिषेक जे ए डैनिय जेसन दीक्षा गेनान रक्षित एस अमीन फिरदोस रिविया एन टोनी अपर्णा शर्मा मरिया बोसी कुंडोडे हर्षिता कटोच अपर्णा प्रकाश निकिता दास नायन राज शंकर गणपति एम श्रेयांशु भूषण रूड्रिन भासु प्रणव रविंद्रन कश्यप राजीव वरुण शर्मन अश्विन पी वी अंकित कुमार गुप्ता एस सुधीर कुमार रेड्डी चंदू किशन मलिसेटी विजय राज पी मधुमिता ए अमर कुमार प्रवीण कुमार सैनी कृषान गोपाल रूपम नरसरिया रोहित एम के शफिया भानु कंडला नव्य नागेश मोनिशा उन्नी कृष्णन आयर वेदांत वेंकटरामन रोहित जॉन फिलिप डॉमिनी केनेथ रचमला निखिल ईश्वर उत्कर्ष सिंह सुभाष एस जकारिया जोसेफ मुहम्मद अब्दुल्ला आलम शुभम कुमार डवेन फ्रांसिस डिकोस्टा इमानुअल डेविड येशुदासन जॉर्ज पी एब्राहम B.Tech in Electrical and Electronics Engineering Renika Paul Renika Paul has secured the first rank in B.Tech in Electrical and Electronics Engineering with a CGPA of 3.93 out of 4. Alan Thomas Joe Thomas S.M. Satish Kumaran Renika Paul Clementina Partha Bansal Mulla Arif Basha Rahul Modi Kyaneshwar Satish Shikha Siddharth Arya Radhakrishnan Sanchi Jaiswal Dev Broto Das 
अकिल बिजू रजत राजदान मोहम्मद फहीम अनिम अंकित वर्मा मंगोत श्रीजिश बीटेक इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग रोशन चेरियन Roshan Cherian has secured first rank in BTech in Electronics and Communication Engineering with a CGPA of 3.69 out of 4. Saumya Srinivasan, Rudraksh Mishra, R Arjun, Bhram Dev Tiwari, Isaac S, K Abhishek Chandran, K Kartik एम सी बी मनुष मेगा श्याम मिंटो मैथ्यू के जे स्टीव स्टीफन एंजला अनीशा अंजना के एस क्लैरन रेनी डिलाइला जस्टीना थॉमस निकिता नायर पूजिता एम रोस एंटनी Ruth Sandra H Chaitra Rao Kartik E Roshan Cherian Farheen Zubair Drupad U Vignesh N H Sharu D A Manoj Kumar Reddy P Amar Priyanka Biswas Ashish Priyadarshi Nandita Nair Siddhartha Atreya Sai Jeet Utsav Dhingya Pratush Datta Athena Ann Thomas Sandeep Michael Kevin Bastian Riordan M A लूर्दू अखिल खन्ना बीटेक इन इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी अमन अगस्तिया अमन अगस्तिया हैज सेक्योर्ड फर्स्ट रैंक इन बीटेक इन इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी विद सी जी पी ए ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट सेवन आउट ऑफ फोर विलियम्स थॉमस एबल थॉमस कोशी आदर्श शाजी आनंदू एम धारण जॉशो डोमिनिक डेक्स्टर आर रोहन एस पॉल अरसु शिवम शुक्ला तेजस जॉर्ज विविन मेत एल वी जकरिया सी एफ एंटनी रश्मि श्री शारन जेकब वर्षा शर्मा गिरितरन जी जॉर्ज ए जोस अक्षय प्रमोद सकीना शीतल साजू रेयद मोइदू एम डी शाबुद्दीन आरिब नवाज खान हरिणी एच आशन साजी चाको अंजलि प्रजपाति श्रुति एस ऐश्वर्य श्री के देवर्षि ऋषि राज आशीष आनंद जेरी जॉर्ज नितिन ऋतिक अग्रवाल हिमांशु सिंघाल शुभराज जोय मोहित अमन अगस्त्य नित्य पी जयश्री पंचमी एम आदित्य गोयल सुदर्शन एस के बीटेक इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग लोबो केविन आइवन लोबो केविन आइवन 
has secured the first rank in BTEC in Mechanical Engineering with a CGPA of 3.83 out of 4. Shai Kotacharwa Shabas, Anjima Sibi, Pooja Anup, Rebecca Sebastian, Ambala Gautam Reddy, Rishi Keshav Sharma KP, Dasri Sai Charan Tej, Nimi Mary Vergis, Reshmi S, Varshini A U, Lobo Kevin Ivan, Abash Raj P, Akil Harold Peter, Alvin John, Amal Arakil Harris, Amal Tom Vergis, Anand Vinod, Andre Mascarenes, Anson Wilby Abraham, Anthony Joel Pavartikaran, Arul Hridaya Anthony J, Ashwin Munjali, Avinash C, B. Matthew, Bini Richard Suran, Brian Yasant Yen, Chandragiri Sudarshan Yadav, Darshat B. Eric Tombosco Melt. George Jos. Girish Vishnu Prasad. Jito George. Joe Paul Taliat. Joel Hughes Sajan. Kevin Sony. Marvin Abraham Alex. Michael Thomas Philip. Mohammed Fajas, Mohammed Elias P, Mohammed Sharuk A, Nidal Harris, Paul B. Thaliat, Philbert J. Fernandez E. Mendonca, Prajit Shivdasan, Punakal Samson Wilson, Rahul Bharatwaj K, Rahul Thomas, Rito Viju, Rohit Babu, Sachin Matthew, Samuel Lejo Putur, Shiban Babu, Siddharth Ramachandran, Sauvik Ghosh, Srijai Srideep, Suraj Cyril, Sylvester Avjit Gomes, Udaya Murthy R, Venkat Raman VK, Vishal Patil, Vivek D. R. Vivan Chakalil George, Anaga M. Menon, Anjali P. Nair, John K. Bijo, Shankar Ganesh L., Rennie Joes P., Dara Moses, Adarsh M. P., Nakul K. Mohan, Manohar Joel Mura, Ananta Krishna B. Anand Pradeep. Mervyn Joseph Thomas. Rashmi S. Anto John. Vinu Vijay. Yes Arhan Basha. Roshil Matthew. M. Prabhu Akil. Moturu Sai Sumant. Anshul Kumar Mangal. Gotimayam Sachdev Sharma, Pavan Saidu, Jitu Matthew, A. Swati, P. K. Fars, Hijas Ahmad K. T, Danashyam A. S, Alija Ali Gibran, Nikhil, Shomyajit Mishra, K. Prudviraj, Tanix John Matthew, Sukumar Reddy, Dadi Reddy, Gershom Peter Matai, Sushant Sen Gupta, Adishai Aman Jairaj, Danish Mohammed Khan, Shinto Anthony C, 
सर्वेश बिकनवार कूनम गौतम रेड्डी मोहम्मद अकील खे एंटनी सुरल वर्गीस अमल मैथ्यूफ अर्जुन जेम्स मोहम्मद अमेश आनंद कृष्णन पी बी मोहम्मद एस ए विनय जोसन एंटोसानी अक्षय के विनोद एम टेक इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एंजल पी जोशी Angel P Joshi has secured first rank in MTech in Computer Science and Engineering with a CGPA of 3.7 out of 4. Albin Joseph Albin Joseph Amal Varghese Jerry Chako Angel P Joshi and Maria Jason Dais Jumaima Tapasum Farhana Donnie's Matthew Charles Kelvin Hilda Janis C H Yashwant Rachel Joy M Stephen Bitra Varija Sai Mtech and Information Technology Arun Kumar Nair Arun Kumar Nair has secured the first place in MTech and Information Technology with a CGPA of 2.91 out of 4 MTech in Machine Design Narin Christo J Narin Christo J has secured first rank in MTech in Machine Design with a CGPA of 3.87 out of 4 Parag Ravindra Desh Pandey Sagar Verma Salin Paul Valuran Mtech in Power Systems Priyanka Avinash Patel Priyanka Avinash Patel has secured first rank in Mtech in Power Systems with a CGPA of 3.92 out of 4 Kristi Anil Joseph Priyanka Avinash Patel Shiva Ramakrishna Mtech and Structural Engineering Dikeshwar Devangan Dikeshwar Devangan has secured the first place in Mtech and Structural Engineering with a CGPA of 3.9 out of 4 Majin Mathew Mibantisham Pingrop Prajwal John A Yadula Sujat Kumar Reddy Bhupati Raju Pranati Devi Priya HB Irisha Karmi Potlu Roshni Sona N Jos The honorable chancellor will confer the degrees. I request all the graduates to please stand up. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of Christ deemed to be university, I hereby admit you to the various degrees having been examined, certified and approved by the university. and the different schools i prevail on you that ever in your life and conversation you show yourselves worthy of the degree awarded dr ivan jose dean school of engineering and technology will administer the pledge to the graduates i request the graduates to remain standing for the pledge All the graduates please keep your right palm close to your heart and repeat the pledge after me 
as a graduate of Christ deemed to be university, as a graduate of Christ deemed to be university, I promise to uphold the dignity, I promise to uphold the dignity, honor and prestige of this university, honor and prestige of this university. I will conduct myself with honesty and integrity. I will conduct myself with honesty and integrity. Taking responsibility for my actions. Taking responsibility for my actions. And respecting the rights. And respecting the rights. Opinions and dignity of all. Opinions and dignity of all. I will cherish the core values inculcated in me. I will cherish the core values inculcated in me. In this temple of learning. In this temple of learning, and will uphold them in the journey of my life. And will uphold them in the journey of my life. I will use my knowledge. I will use my knowledge, experience, and skills. Experience and skills to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability for the advancement of learning. For the advancement of learning for the well-being of the community. For the well-being of the community and for public good. And for public good, I will strive to create a better society. I will strive to create a better society with a sense of fairness. With a sense of fairness, social justice. Social justice and environmental responsibility. And environmental responsibility. I will follow the path of righteousness. I will follow the path of righteousness. With respect to all ethical considerations. With respect to all ethical considerations. To prove myself a worthy citizen of my country. To prove myself a worthy citizen of my country. As I leave the portals of my alma mater. As I leave the portals of my alma mater. I promise to carry on the good tradition. I promise to carry on the good tradition that I belong to. That I belong to. In whatever I do. In whatever I do. Strengthened by this mission. Strengthened by the mission. And guided by the vision of excellence and service. And guided by the vision of excellence and service. I take this pledge. I take this pledge by reaffirming my faith in God Almighty. By reaffirming my faith in God Almighty, who will always be my guiding spirit. Who will always be my guiding spirit. Congratulations on your accomplishment. This is a proud moment. I request the graduates to be seated. Professor Tyrone Pretorius, Rector and Vice-Chancellor, Western Cape University, South Africa, our chief guest today, will deliver the convocation address. A psychologist by training, Professor Pretorius has made immense contributions to the field. He has been recognized with a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Psychology Society for his contributions to the discipline in South Africa. He was a Pro Vice Chancellor of Monash, South Africa, a campus of Monash University, Australia, a past Fellow of the Yale University Southern Africa Fellowship Program, and has completed the Oxford University Leadership Program. Professor Tyrone Pretorius. Chancellor Dr. Father Paul Achande, Vice Chancellor Dr. Father Abram Vetiankal Mani. Pro Vice Chancellor Dr. Father Joseph, Controller of Examinations Professor Johnny Joseph, uh, the Registrar Dr. Anil Joseph Pinto, uh, Deans, Directors, Department Heads, Program Coordinators, Parents, Family Members, and Graduating Students. I bring you very warm greetings from the University of the Western Cape and from South Africa. I'm at home today. I'm at home wherever few or many congregate to celebrate the transformative power of education. I'm at home with all of those who share my passion for education. I'm at home wherever the potential role that education can play in affecting the lives of the socially marginalized is highlighted and celebrated with abandon. It mirrors my own life, my trials and tribulations, and my triumphs. Therefore, today I am at home. Thank you for the honor of inviting me to address the Christ University Convocation and congratulations to all the graduates. As I often tell our own graduates, today, 
represents the culmination of many years of sacrifice, dedication, discipline and hard work. You and those who have supported you throughout this journey should be very proud of your achievements. It is just unfortunate that you cannot be together in the same physical space to celebrate this special occasion. Now a certain man caught a young eagle, brought it home, put it among his chickens and gave a chicken food to eat. Five years later a naturalist passed by and saw the eagle among the chickens and said, that bird is an eagle, not a chicken. Yes, said the owner, but I have trained it to be a chicken and it is no longer an eagle, even though it measures 15 feet in wingspan. No, said the naturalist, it is an eagle still. It is the heart of an eagle and I will make it soar high up to the heavens. No, said its owner, it is now a chicken and it will never fly. They agreed to test it. The naturalist picked up the eagle, held it up and said with great intensity, Eagle, thou art an eagle. Thou belong to the sky and not to this earth. Stretch forth thy wings and fly. The eagle looked this way and that way and then looking down saw the chickens eating their food and down he jumped and joined the chickens. The owner said, see, I told you, it was a chicken. No, said the naturalist, it is an eagle. Let us try again tomorrow. They repeated this and once again the eagle, seeing the chickens feeding, jumped down and fed with them. Then the owner said, I told you it was a chicken. No, said the naturalist, it is an eagle and it still has the heart of an eagle. Let us try one more time. The next morning he rose very early and took the eagle outside the city, away from the houses, to the foot of a high mountain. He picked up the eagle and said, Eagle, thou art an eagle, spread forth thy wings and fly. He then made the eagle look straight at the sun, and as the first rays of the sun hit its eyes, its natural instinct rose up. Suddenly it stretched out its wings and with a screech of an eagle, it mounted up higher and higher and never returned. It was an eagle, though it had been kept and tamed as a chicken. As our university celebrates its 60th anniversary this year, we are very proud of the contributions we could make to our country during the struggle against apartheid, when we were able to provide an intellectual space for contestation and debate. As our former rector, Professor Jake Scherwell termed it, UWC became the intellectual home of the left. Colonialism and apartheid had made us believe we were chickens, but we have the heart of an eagle, and, an in and as an institution, we have sought. As the Vice-Chancellor of the University of the Western Cape, I have also seen evidence of change as hundreds of students enter our institution as the first person in their family to attend a university and graduate. Their personal circumstances have made them believe they are chickens, but when given the opportunity, they soared like eagles. This catalytic effect is perhaps best described by Mr. Nelson Mandela, South Africa's first democratically elected president. And I quote, It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that a child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have not out of what we are given, that separates one person from another. And so there are many conditions, many practices that make us think we are chickens. Through corruption, the widening gap between rich and poor, the daily assault on our mothers, our sisters, our daughters. Through all of these things, we have been led to believe 
We are chickens, but we are not. And it is you, the young people of the world, that should soar like eagles in the fight against these societal ills. At this time as a world, we face a devastating coronavirus pandemic, one that has significant potential to make us feel like chickens. At a time like this, when a pandemic has dictated so much of our actions and changed our lives so profoundly, we must come together against a common cause. This time, however, we need to harness kindness, compassion and empathy as we see the even greater hardships that the pandemic has brought. Martin Luther King Jr. summed up the meaning of compassion that we need to practice when he said that true compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. True compassion comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. If we are able to understand that we are in this together, we can focus on building and shaping our world in which equality is at its very center. It means taking a hard look at the edifices that produce the poor, the marginalized, and the vulnerable in our society. And it is our duty as citizens of the world and particularly young people like you, to influence the shaping of these edifices so that the generations that come after us will benefit. It is your duty as young people to lead us in soaring like eagles. In the Robert Frost poem, stopping by the woods on a snowy evening, he writes, and I quote, The woods are lovely, dark and deep but I have promises to keep and many miles to go before I sleep. The words I have miles to go before I sleep is a statement about obligations. The purposeful life is often made up of a series of obligations and a number of duties to fulfill. The world owes us nothing. We are not entitled to anything. Rather, we owe it to our world, to our society, our community, and to ourselves to do our duty and to meet our obligations. You, the graduates, have been given the opportunity to soar as eagles. With those opportunities come an obligation and a duty. Let no one dictate what that duty and obligation is and should be, but find it inside of you. Obligation and duty, these two hallowed words reverently dictate what we ought to be, what we can be, and what we will be. I know that Christ University has prepared you to face the challenges of the 21st century with both confidence and conscience. Graduates, I therefore charge you today, go out into the world and fulfill your duty. Be the change agents with integrity that this university has equipped you to be. I wish you great fortune in your future endeavors and once again our deepest congratulations on your remarkable achievements. Soar young eagles, soar. Our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Father Paul Achandi, is a guiding force an inspiration that enables Christ, deemed to be university, to grow from strength to strength. Father will now address us. Chief Guest of the Day, Professor Tyrell Pretorius, Rector and Vice-Chancellor, Western Cape University, South Africa. Reverend Dr. Abraham, Honorable Vice-Chancellor of Christ University. Reverend Dr. Joe Sisi, Pro-Vice-Chancellor. Dr. Anil Joseph Pindo, Registrar. Esteemed Deans and Faculty Members. Distinguished Guests and Dear Students. It's indeed 
a rare honor and privilege for me to be part of the convocation ceremony of 2020 of Christ Deemed to be University. The students, parents, faculty members, and the whole university have been waiting for this great day. At the very outset, may I congratulate all the students who are graduating this year from Christ University and wish them God's grace and blessings on their way ahead. I congratulate the entire Christ University family for transforming the students into responsible and mature adults and professionals with a strong footing on the constant discipline of study and life skills. Christ has been always a forward-looking and forward-thinking institution with supportive management and quality faculty members. I do salute Reverend Father Abraham, Honorable Vice Chancellor, who follows the servant leadership after the model of Jesus Christ with his compassionate and collegial style of discernment, dialogue, and decision. I'm sure today's youngsters are smarter than yesteryears. Every year I find a smarter group of students in every class. Today's young generation is more confident and connected. More than working, they do more networking. More than reading, they do more googling. A one semester course will be cracked by just one day's effort. Yes, they are smarter. They are lucky to be the youth of today. Dear students, till today, you may have been making judgments on your teachers, institution, family, and the society. The world is corrupt and sickening. Teachers are eccentric and idiotic. Office system is rigid and intolerant. Parents are outfashioned and archaic. And you think you are okay, but they are not okay. Remember, within a short time, you will be counted one among them. Despite all your smartness and dynamism, the smarter world outside may call you mediocre and arrogant. You are not the center of the world. You need to punctuate the hot air balloons inflated by your own false self-image and perception. But I am sure your unique and different educational experience at Christ University will make you stand out an island of excellence floating in the sea of mediocrity. COVID-19, social distancing, pandemic, Corona, PPE, WFH, quarantine, isolation, super spreader, and herd immunity are the most repeated words of the year 2020. In 2019, Dictionary.com selected existential as its word of the year. The word existential inspires us to ask big questions about who we are and what our purpose is in the face of our various challenges. And it reminds us that we can make choices about our lives in how we answer those questions. But there is a darker side to the choice. In the year defined largely by themes of threat and crisis, the word kept coming up in searches that often followed events that involved climate change, gun violence, and setback of democratic institution. The word existential is often used when the fact of someone or something's being its very existence 
is at stake. An existential threat to a species, for example, puts its continued existence in real or concrete peril, the side said. There was also interesting observations like when Google Calendar was down for three hours and we all had existential crisis. Now we are in existential crisis out of COVID-19 and its consequences. In India, we find existential crisis for the farmers, business, democratic institutions, women and children, and people in general. According to dictionary.com, the word was chosen as it captures a sense of grappling with the survival, literally and figuratively, of our planet, our loved ones, and our ways of life. When things get tough, the tough get going. We are very glad that Christ's community has been responding creatively and proactively in today's challenging context to existential crisis, to cope with and embrace the new normal. In this pandemic season, the word of the year shall be confidence. Jack Welch, the renowned CEO of GE, once stated, GE does not guarantee you lifelong employment, but if you are with GE, we assure you lifelong employability. No academic institution can ever send a finished product, but one in making or in progress. According to Jack Welch, what an educational institution shall offer to the students is nothing but confidence. And along with confidence, we need learnability. The illiterate of the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. Alfin Toffler. Hence, learnability is the winning currency in today's volatile and changing world. Infosys insists on the criterion of learnability while recruiting and selecting a candidate. Learnability is the ability and willingness to learn and it is a mandatory requirement for any graduate to survive and succeed in any profession for that matter. The more we know, the more we realize how little we know. Individual human being knows embarrassingly very little about the world and as history progressed, they came to know less and less. A hunter-gatherer in the Stone Age knew how to make her own clothes, how to start a fire, how to hunt rabbits, and how to escape lines. We think we know far more today, but as individuals, we actually know far less. We rely on the expertise of others for almost for all needs, says Yuval Noah Harari in 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. It is important to realize that what your teachers did teach you in Christ is what is needed to make you a graduate. But being a graduate, being a professional, demands much more than this. What you need is confidence and learnability. From initial education and formation, each one has to graduate to an ongoing educational formation, a passion for learning, and a growing courage to try new things and to share the self-learning wisdom in the school of life. Unless you keep on learning, you will be left behind. Unless you update yourself, you will be outdated. In the West, convocation ceremonies are often called commencement exercises. There is a good reason they call these 
ceremonies, commencements, exercises. Graduation is not the end. It is the beginning, says Orin Hatch. To get a job after your graduation, you need to provide contribution value. And to provide contribution value, you need information, knowledge and skill along with right attitude. But to get a promotion and a transfer to higher position, you might need much more in terms of insight, foresight and wisdom depending upon the nature of the assignment. Thus, knowledge has different rising levels. Information, knowledge, skill, insight, foresight and wisdom. In India, one who gives information, we call him Adhyabak. One who provides knowledge is Ubadhyaya. One who grants a skill is Acharya. Then for insight by Pandit, foresight by Darshanik, and wisdom by Guru. Every teacher begins one's career as Adhyabak, but at least by the time of retirement, one should graduate from Adhyabak to Guru. Pablo Picasso is believed to have said that computers are useless. They only give you answers. Indeed, we still have to ask questions. Humanity still needs its imagination and conscience to survive and to thrive. And no remote has been invented for that as yet. May all of you move from information to knowledge and from Adhyabak to Guru in your personal life and in your professional life. May the Lord bless you abundantly for a great life ahead. I am sure you will ever remain as the pride of Christ University. Thank you. After those inspiring words, the President of the University Alumni Association, Mr. Jugnu Uberoi, wishes to felicitate our new graduates. Mr. Uberoi belongs to the first batch of graduating students in the then Christ College in 1969. My good friend, in today's new Chancellor, Dr. Reverend Father Paul, guest of honor, Dr. Priya Torres, the Vice Chancellor of Western Cape University, South Africa, this fine gentleman who has been able to move with, sudden, with, with a sudden unknown time in completing our admission, online classes and exams very successfully in Father Dr. VC, Father Abraham, the Albani sir, salute you. My fellow almanus and guru and my son's teacher in pro vice chancellor, Dr. Father Jose, the gentleman register, Dr. Anil, every Christite's enemy in controller of examination, Professor Johnny, respected fathers, deans, HODs, faculties, and today's proud parents of the 2020 graduating Christites. My namaskarams. Walaikum Salaam, Sat Sri Kaal, and a very, very good morning to one and all. My fellow graduating students, I stand before you as a terrified speaker, but a very proud Christite. We have quite a few common facts between us. I am from the first batch of students from the year 1969, and you are the first batch of graduating students to hold a virtual convocation. Pray, it's the first and last. You are also the first batch in the last 35 years and over not to have any pretty Christites dressed in the best Indian attire just back from the beauty parlor missing today. This day, you have received some great advice from speakers before me, and I urge you all to keep that in mind. Now, let me, as your seniors, add a small bit to their thoughts. At the outset, I carry the greetings of thousands of Christites who have walked out of this campus with their heads held high. 
You are fortunate to have graduated from one of the finest institutions in the country. While on its teaching and principles, I wish to remind you of two small but very important aspects which we tend to forget. Thank the old couple as you youngsters address your dear parents. Carry a rose, carry a chocolate, or just take their blessings and thank them for walking the distance with you. Give them that jadu ki japi. Do recall how at a drop of a hat that you have asked your mother to wake you up at 4 a.m. to study for an exam and the poor lady tosses and turns the whole night in fear that she will miss the alarm, wakes you up much earlier with a steaming cup of coffee. Remember the number of times your dear father has kept his necessities away in order that you may have a better time and life in your campus. My fellow Christites, I do not recall if I have said these words to my parents and even today I long to say so. But unfortunately, fate has separated us. Let history not be repeated with you. Friends, I will leave your thoughts with a very touching story. After his father's death, the son decided to leave his mother at an old age home where he visited her off and on. One day he received a call from the old age home seeking that say, stating that his mother was very serious. Please urgently come. So he went and saw that his mother was very critical and on a dying bed. He asked her, Ma, what can I do for you? She replied, Please, can you install fans in this old age home as they are none and also put a fridge for the betterment of food because many a times I have slept hung hungry. Son was surprised and asked his mother, While you were here, you never complained. Now that you have a few hours left, why are you telling me all this? She replied, It's okay, dear. I have managed to bear the heat and the hunger and the pain, but while your children will send you here, I am afraid you will not be able to bear it. My fellow Christites, this is every parent who even in the last breath will always remember you. Then why don't we give them the love and respect they deserve? In the same tone, our scripture tells us that we must bow to our gurus even before we bow to the Lord above. These faculties have given you all the wealth, the wealth of knowledge, and no money can buy it. If it is so, each one of us would have been a Bill Gates. They ask nothing in return, but look forward to your visit one day to tell them the plant they have watered has borne fruit. Today, time is not with me, so I'll sign off with saying, with just a statement saying, informing you, Mere dost kabhi alvida mat kehna. Remember, the gates of Christ University are always open to you. Thank you all for your patient hearing. Godspeed. God bless you. Jai Hind. The time that you have spent in this university will live forever in your memories. Let us now hear from Ms. Siri Prasad, School of Law, who will share the sentiments of the new graduates, which will be followed by the farewell dance. Warm greetings to our Chancellor, Rev. Father Paul Echandi, Vice Chancellor, Rev. Father Abraham, our Chief Guest, Prof. Tyron Pretorius, all the other dignitaries, staff, proud parents, and of course the graduating batch of 2020. It is a wonderful opportunity to speak on behalf of all the graduating students of Christ Bangalore. We definitely would not have been here today had it not been for the tireless efforts and dedication of all those who made this possible. On behalf of all the students, I pay my sincere gratitude to this university for bringing out the best in us, faculty for teaching us lessons beyond the textbooks, and last but not the least, all our dear parents who have driven our dreams home, encouraged us to break out of our shells and let us define our lives the way we want to. You all have without a doubt been our greatest cheerleaders. Thanks to all our lovely friends who gave us crash courses before exams, who sent us voice notes of all the important topics, who formatted our dissertation, who brought us an extra photocopy of notes from the library, who got us an extra bun samosa from Mingo's, and finally to all those who asked teachers to give us attendance when we were late to class by 5 minutes. Together, we did it all, and today we can claim we all did it together. Congratulations. University life is 
as a roller coaster ride but with all of us together everything became a wonderful memory there is a force and strength in us which lets us handle much more than we believe we can this force is stronger than our excuses stronger than our fears and stronger than the apparently unwinnable battles that life makes us fight we've been through an unprecedented year with each of us dealing with unfounded challenges this definitely was not the graduation ceremony that we had dreamt of from not being able to take pictures in front of the central block or not being able to do the traditional walk across the campus to receive our very hard on degree but this different experience binds us together as our story for our future and shall become part of the nostalgia of our past we should be proud of ourselves for surviving the big things and for overcoming every obstacle however we must learn to celebrate the little wins and moments of instant gratification because you would be surprised how the little things can either throw you off balance and knock you out or they can chart the course to a new ocean of opportunities we've all thrown up pebbles into the water and now is the time to watch the skips the ripples and the enjoyment of the throw itself to reflect in our life now we are all set to chase our dreams and take on the world as lawyers teachers entrepreneurs athletes dancers researchers chefs leaders engineers architects and more the next step awaits and i cannot fathom what is in store for us but rest assured that we the batch of 2020 are prepared than anybody else i hope we make ourselves our parents and this esteemed university very proud here is wishing you all the very best of everything thank you again for this opportunity convocation ceremony with the permission of the honorable chancellor the convocation ceremony is closed dr john joseph kennedy dean school of arts and humanities will deliver the vote of thanks
Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness. It's a spark that lights a fire of joy in your soul, remarked Amy Collett. And we all know that it is through gratitude we make sense of our past, bring peace for today, and create a vision for tomorrow. The time has come now for us to remember with gratitude everyone who worked tirelessly to make this event a big success. Disruptions in general are not welcome, especially when the going is good. But as rational beings, we all know that disruptions are inevitable. Thankfully, however, they teach us the value of adaptation, spurring us to rethink, reinvent and recreate our practices. The COVID-19 pandemic has exactly done that. Despite the disruptions thrust on us, we have been able to convert them into positives, transform constraints into strengths. The virtual convocation that we are about to conclude first time in the history of the university is a tall testimony to that. And for that, firstly, we must thank the Almighty for giving us the necessary wisdom and the strength to conduct this event successfully. Next, I wish to thank the Honourable Chancellor of Christ University in a special way. Dr. Father Paula Chandi recently assumed office as the Chancellor. However, he has always been associated with Christ for several decades now, first as a faculty and as an administrator later. His far-sighted vision for the university is evident in his addresses, both to the faculty and to the students. We pray that St. Chavra, the founder of the CMI congregation, continues to inspire the Chancellor in taking the university to greater heights. On behalf of the university, I previously thank you, Father Chandi, for your presence and your splendid address today. Our chief guest for today, Professor Tyrone Pretorius, Rector and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Western Cape, South Africa, through his convocation address, has inspired our students to courageously face the challenges of the world and how to progress with confidence in their life's journey and realize their dreams. Sir, we would have loved to host you here on this vibrant campus and listen to you in person. But the invisible virus has come in the way, and here we are thanking you from thousands of miles away. Though physically distant, mentally we feel we are closer. Your powerful and meaningful address has significantly enhanced that feeling of closeness. We are absolutely thankful to you for accepting our invitation and delivering a very insightful, invigorating and thought-provoking address. Thank you very much, sir. Our Honourable Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Father Abraham Veeam, is a man of few words. He prefers to act, do things, rather than talk. His leadership style is infectious and worthy of emulation. His vision of a university is one where the holistic well-being of all receives prime focus, and that has earned him the respect of all. His insistence on establishing a happiness quotient as the permanent hallmark of Christ University through a servant leadership model is quite laudable. We are thankful to you, Father, for your understanding, appreciation and unflinching support through your leadership. Thank you for leading us today in this virtual convocation. On this occasion, I wish to place on record our sincere appreciation and gratitude to Dr. Father Joe Sisi, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Pinto, the Registrar, Professor Johnny Joseph, Controller of Examinations, Deans of all schools, Heads of Departments and Faculty Members for their tireless work and noteworthy contribution towards the smooth conduct of this convocation. 
A special word of thanks is due to the IT team and the staff of Center for Concept Design, led by Dr. Father Beju and Dr. Father Justin, without whom this event would not have been possible. Thanks are also due to the staff of the Office of Examinations for the timely completion of work, enabling the convocation to be held at the stipulated time. On behalf of the university, I also thank the proud parents and guests for being part of this occasion. Lastly, but most importantly, I wish to thank our graduates who are the real heroes of this event. You have toiled for several years on this beautiful campus to come this far. You must cherish this great moment of fulfillment and realization. Every minute spent at Christ would have taught you valuable lessons that I'm sure will guide you all through your life. Be happy and always feel grateful to your alma mater. Christ University will stand by you in all your initiatives and wish you well. At the same time, we thank you for being part of this great institution and giving us the opportunity to serve you. May God bless you all. Thank you and have a wonderful day. As we come to the close of the proceedings of this memorable Convocation 2020, kindly stand up for the National Anthem. Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Uttkala, Vanga. Himachal Yamuna Ganga, Uchala Jaladhi Taranga, Tava Shubha Name Jage, Tava Shubha Ashish Mage, Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha, Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya He, Bharat Bhagya Vidhata, Jai 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 Jai